Good morning, everyone. My forecast this morning for the entire New England area is as follows. You always think back of the old days and you say things were better. Some things were better. This is a nice city to live in. Everything here, you had everything here, you had anyone else, any other place. There was really no skyline. It was every, everything was really, the buildings were really shot. If you went into Boston, you got all dressed up. I'd put on my best clothes and high heels and gloves and a hat. At Haymarket Square, you could spend ten dollars, have fresh meats, vegetables for a month. For relaxation, so many nightclubs. It was so great. All the trios playing. For two or three dollars, you had dinner. We used to call it a floor show. Boston was really a rabbit swan. It was a labyrinth with all these curvy, twisty streets, and it was a very intimate city. Everybody loved the Braves, and, and that was the year that the Red Sox lost the playoffs. We weren't afraid. There was no fear. People kept their doors open. Good evening. I'm Tom O'Connor, professor of history at Boston College. For the past 40 years or so, one of my favorite classes has dealt with the history of Boston. Why? Well, maybe it's because I was born in South Boston and spent most of my life here. It seemed like the most natural thing to do. But I think there was more to it than that. Boston is like a thick stew, bubbling over with its traditions, rich in its institutions. And even with time making its inevitable changes, the Boston I know and the Boston I remember, well, that's Boston. And that's the way it was. It was a time of depression, but uh, you know we had enough to eat. We, we never, yeah, never, we never went hungry. We, you, you buy, know. you got an apple for a nickel. Uh, you pay fifty cents for it today. You know, hot dogs with Joe and Ian was were a nickel and a dime at sure. that time. Yeah. No, they, it, and we always had milk and bread. The war was over. Everyone was so grateful that if their boyfriend, their husband, their brother came home safe, and. You were satisfied with a lot less. You know the greatest advantage in those days? We didn't know we were poor. We ended up feeding the, all the relatives, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When their lights went out, you'd run a wire from one house to the other. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they'd have electricity. Yeah. And, well, you have vans every night, people walking up the street, everybody having a good time. The 40s became the turning point of our country. We're out of the depression years. Suddenly there's employment. People now have expendable income. We're coming of age in America. Coming of age. The war was over. Many of us were restless. Restless. What do we do our lives now? We've survived. Boston in the 40s. Hard to believe it was just 50 years ago. Yes, Joe and Nemo hot dogs were a nickel. Trolley rides a dime. But if you really want to tell the story of a very different era, consider this. The Customs House Tower was the tallest building in Boston. Rent for an apartment in a triple decker, $50 a month. A house in the suburbs sold for about $10,000. A new Buick cost $900. And to fill the tank, a buck and a half. The typical Boston Irish Saturday night dinner was baked beans and brown bread. A pack of Lucky Strikes cost 15 cents. And a lady's dress from Feline's basement was indeed a bargain at $5. The secretary's salary was about $25 a week. And it was a pretty good bet that she pulled the lever for James Michael Curley in the last mayoral election. And dump his rotten carcass in Boston Harbor. 